Storm and Stress, The French Connection, in the guise of one Joseph Bologna, Le Chevalier du Saint-Georges. Greetings, music lovers. Rick Ferguson, rickfergusonmusic.com. Thank you for joining me in this video. Thank you for your support. It's lovely to see you here. Feel free to like and subscribe if you wish. This is a very personalized view of music from the storm and stress Sturm und Drang period in primarily in Germany late 1760s throughout the 1780s uh, and here we're going to be focusing on a particular piece of Joseph Bologna's a rather interesting outlier in his compositional output so this entire Sturm und Drang movement, both in music and in literature, really set the stage for 19th century romanticism. A fascinating, very brief period of time that had a tremendous impact throughout Europe, to a great extent starting in 1774 with the publication of Goethe's novels, The Sorrows of Young Werther. I have actually created another video exploring that book and the ramifications of it culturally throughout Europe during this time period. Uh, so feel free, I will link that video here below, Chopin, Goethe, and the Sorrows of Young Werther. I've also explored a little bit of the life story and activities of Joseph Bologna in my video, Teacher and Students Explore the Music of Black Composer Joseph Bologna. That will also be linked here in this video. So feel free to, to reference those. One of the primary musical examples of Sturm und Drang inspired music was that of Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. Born in 1714, died in 1788, known as the Berlin Bach court composer to Frederick the Great. And C.P.E. Bach really fully embraced this idea of exploring emotional and psychological extremes in music and also the idea of of creating sudden emotional deep shifts within music uh, to affect the listener really very much from a visceral emotional standpoint and apparently that also spoke if a more if in a more subtle way to Joseph Bologna as well so let's let's back up just a little bit for 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 a moment and let's get a sense of Bologna as a as a violinist as a composer uh, you know he became i think at the age of 22 Bologna did the concert master and then later the conductor for one of the more significant orchestras in Paris during this time period Les Concerts des Amateurs and he even in 1722 became a sensation in Paris with the premiere of his own first two violin concerti on a performance series during that time. Bologna also composed roughly 10 or so, we, we think at least thus far, and scholarship of course is, is continually evolving, so who knows what, what extra goodies will actually end up coming across. But at this time, we have 10 works for violin and piano, and they are all highly classical, both in style, in structure, in temperament. And so I want to hear a, a very short example. Let's hear the exposition of the Sonata for Piano with Obligato Violin, which is actually an arrangement that Bologna created of his concerto in G minor, G major, the first movement being in G minor, the second in G major of his Opus 2, number 1 violin concerto. I'll be joined by my daughter, Molly, in this performance as we're reading this. So let's hear this, this exposition from this particular sonata. Enjoy. <laughs>
Molly. That was a lot of fun. So you can hear, of course, it it sounds, you know, shades of, of perhaps Haydn, definitely shades of a Mozartian style, keeping in mind, however, that in many ways, Bologna was a precursor, uh, not not just a contemporary, but a precursor to Mozart being been, been born. Well, there, there's, there's a little bit of disagreement uh, as to his actual year of birth. Some sources list, list 1745, some 1739. But, you know, he was certainly born uh, prior to Mozart and really developed his own classical style and language during this time. But there was, of course, another side, another more intimate side to, Polo to Bologna's personality, in particular as a composer, that he really didn't share with others except for his very close circle of friends, which he, he kept very close to himself because navigating the hierarchy of the social life in Paris during this time in the 18th century, the pre-revolutionary time, especially as a black man, a mixed race man during this time, really was a full-time occupation, even though he was supremely gifted, incredibly generous, and in incredibly intelligent as well. So Bologna composed, we think at this point, 11 works for the keyboard. Only one, however, survives. It's Adagio in F minor, which you'll be hearing. It is thought that perhaps these other keyboard works served as sketches for larger orchestral or operatic compositions of Bologna but we do have this adagio. So I want us to listen to this from the point of view of this Sturm und Drang movement. So as a means of comparison, let's hear a very brief work first by C.P.E. Bach. That was written also in the same key as Bologna's adagio. So both pieces being in F minor, both transitioning at least for a short period of time in the case of the CPE Bach piece, to the relative major of A flat and then going back to, to F minor again. And there is, I find, very much a degree of, of intimacy, something that, that is held very closely to one's heart. In both of these pieces, CPE Bach actually gives this piece a French title, Les Langueurs Tendres. So a tender, languorous moment, and then Bologna, it's Adagio in F minor. Uh, but they both share, I think, a very similar sensibility in terms of, of it being something that is, that is very personal and not, not intense from a sound intensity perspective, but certainly reflective and inwardly focused, right? So let's first hear the CPE Bach. Enjoy.
now we have Bologna's Adagio, and this is a slightly larger canvas that Bologna is, is painting on, but also it's creating space for a little bit more development of ideas. And whereas in the CPE Bach piece, you're hearing that it's, it's very contrapuntal in nature, essentially for the most part two, two part writing, right? And highly chromatic, as was his want, CPE Bach, to be highly chromatic from a very expressive point of view, especially using in, in Baroque terms what is oftentimes called the sighing motive, which is simply just this descending two note motive thought to be the sighing motive. Bologna incorporates a little bit of that kind of thing, but the structure is a little bit more of a full-blown classical rondo type structure, but within it there is this Sturm und Drang inspired exploration of, of emotional reflection. Right, so let's listen to Adagio in F minor by Joseph Bologna. Enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed this music and I would very much encourage you to explore uh, writings about Bologna's life. The scholarship really is starting to, to paint, I think, more of a, um, a full picture of, of the life, the activities, the impacts that Bologna had in terms of French society, French music, and then also music in the classical period. So there is a, a lot of his music that is now being played, sung, heard, and scholarship 
starting to support all of that. So do seek out more information about Joseph Bologna, Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Thank you for joining me in this video. And again, do feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.